20 great 2020 movies you might have missed. The best movies of 2020. Like most industries, the movie business was hit hard by COVID-19. The box office dropped by billions of dollars, and several high-profile films were forced to push back their release dates. That said, online streaming saw a big surge, and, fortunately, there were plenty of great new releases to watch. Here are the best movies of 2020. Sputnik. As Matt Zoller cites of RogerEbert.com notes, this Russian sci-fi horror owes a lot to Ridley Scott's Alien, but it sets itself apart thanks to its very Russian vibe of soulful heaviness and solid performances, especially from lead actress Oksana Akinchina, whose character has been compared favorably to Ellen Ripley. Greyhound. The action never lets up in this World War II thriller written by Tom Hanks, who plays the lead role of Ernest Krauss, the commander of a 37-ship convoy attempting to cross the U-boat infested Atlantic Ocean. It hardly reinvents the wheel, but Greyhound will have you holding your breath from start to finish, thankfully it's only 91 minutes long. Swallow. Described as a provocative and squirm-inducing psychological thriller, Swallow tells the unusual story of a pregnant housewife who, in order to gain back some control of her life, develops an obsession for swallowing harmful objects. As Rolling Stone's David Fear wrote in his 4 out of 5 star review, this is not an easy watch. There is, however, a lot to chew on. The King of Staten Island. Loosely based on Pete Davidson's life, The King of Staten Island sees the SNL star tackling his battle with mental illness with humor and heartfelt honesty. Directed by Judd Apatow, the film largely succeeds thanks to the hilarious dynamic between Davidson and Bill Burr. Borat's subsequent movie film. After 14 years, Sasha Baron Cohen returns as Kazakhstani reporter Borat Sagdiyev, and it couldn't have come at a better time. Thanks to the addition of Maria Bakalova as Borat's teenage daughter, Tutar, Borat's subsequent movie film is just as fresh and outrageous as the original, with an added touch of poignancy. The Trip to Greece The trip comes to a fitting bittersweet end for Rob Brydon and Steve Coogan in the fourth and presumably final entry in the Trip series, set in Greece. Even if it's more or less a rehashing of the same story, only with a new setting, we'll never tire of watching the two comedians swap impressions while dining at five-star restaurants in front of picturesque landscapes, especially not in today's travel-restricted world. Color Out of Space Nicolas Cage is an enigma these days, well, he always has been, but especially these days. His films are either absolute duds, like Primal or Kill Chain, or they're instant cult classics, like 2018's violent yet visually striking Mandy. Fortunately, as messy and over the top as it can be, Color Out of Space falls firmly in the latter category, thanks to Richard Stanley's direction. Based on an H.P. Lovecraft story, this is Stanley's first feature film after his failed attempt to make The Island of Dr. Moreau in 1996. Emma. Unlike other modern adaptations of classic works of literature, Emma doesn't try to put a clever timely twist on a familiar tale, but instead relies on the strength of its source material and, in this case, its talented young cast, led by Anya Taylor-Joy. With this performance, along with her work in The Queen's Gambit, Taylor-Joy is quickly making a case for being one of Hollywood's brightest stars. The Invisible Man Like Jaws, The Invisible Man proves that it's what we don't see on screen that terrifies us most. Elizabeth Moss is so effective at conveying the pain and anguish of her character that you almost believe her abusive ex-boyfriend is really in the room with her. Possessor. With 2012's chillingly creepy antiviral and now this year's Possessor, about a secret agent who inhabits other people's bodies in order to carry out assassinations, Brandon Cronenberg has demonstrated that, much like his father David, he has a knack for body horror, exploring violations of the human body in graphic, gory, and thought-provoking detail. Blow the man down. Criminally overlooked by audiences, this Amazon original was nevertheless a favorite among critics, who described it as incredibly cunning, expertly crafted, and unique and cool and strange and very ambitious. Blow the man down, about a pair of young New England sisters who attempt to conceal a crime, has been compared favorably to Fargo. The half of it. In this clever coming-of-age tale from writer, director Alice Wu, Ellie Chu, a quiet straighter student, agrees to help Paul Munsky, a verbally challenged football player, by writing love letters for him. You may think you've seen this movie a hundred times before, but the half of it takes a surprisingly fresh approach to a familiar classic, and is so tender-hearted and transporting, its characters so likable, that you can't help but want to give the movie and everyone in it a big hug. Shirley. 
Elizabeth Moss should be considered for an Oscar for her performance as Shirley Jackson in this biographical drama based on a largely fictional novel about a period in the, the lottery writer's life. As New Yorker critic Richard Brody points out, Moss is capable of conveying a wide range of emotions just with her facial expressions, which have a virtually musical complexity and offer surprises, with fiery glares and subtly tormented distortions that shift very slowly and infinitesimally but register on screen with great dramatic power. The Social Dilemma You won't look at your phone the same way after watching this powerful Netflix docudrama about the dangers of social networking. In fact, it might even convince you to stop looking at it altogether, at least for a little while. Bad Education Hugh Jackman turns in one of his best performances to date as Dr. Frank Tassone, the popular superintendent overseeing the fourth-ranked public school in the country. Based on the 2004 Roslyn School scandal, the largest public school embezzlement in US history, Bad Education is an indictment of everything that's wrong with the American education system. Sorry we missed you. Ken Loach's movies are the antidote to today's big-budget blockbusters. For decades, the English filmmaker has been exploring stories of the working-class everyman with intense empathy and honesty, and Sorry We Missed You, about a family fighting a never-ending battle against debt, is no different. Bloody Nose, Empty Pockets Part documentary, part drama, Bloody Nose, Empty Pockets is unlike any other movie this year. Set in a Las Vegas bar that's on the brink of shutting down for good. It offers a unique, up-close look at a very American, very contemporary story, about a coming displacement, the bitter and resigned feeling of things eroding beneath you, the sorry realization that one's way of life has been deemed disposable by the dispassionate order of the universe. Driveway's Brian Dennehy's final role is also one of his best, playing Dell, a Korean war vet and lonely widower who spends his days playing bingo and watching the world go by from his front porch, until a lonely young boy and his mother enter his life. As Leah Greenblatt of Entertainment Weekly says, director Andrew Ahn doesn't seem to be aiming for any kind of major epiphanies here, but it's enough just to spend time with such well-developed characters. Palm Springs Andy Samberg and Christine Milioti are two people with whom we wouldn't mind getting stuck in a time loop. Palm Springs, about a pair of wedding guests who repeat the same day over and over again, is equal parts funny, smart, and touching, thanks to its charming leads. The Vast of Night Despite being a favorite among critics, The Vast of Night went largely overlooked by audiences, due in part to a criminal lack of marketing from Amazon. But those fortunate enough to discover this hidden gem were rewarded with the rare sci-fi film that has an intergalactic scope, yet is also an intimate, character-driven film. Athlete A. This Netflix documentary about former USA gymnastics doctor Larry Nass's years of abuse is difficult, yet essential, viewing. More than just a look at one disturbed individual, Athlete A is an indictment of the entire system at USA Gymnastics and the culture of predatory behavior that allowed NASA not only to prey on young girls but to continue to do it for years. First Cow In this film set in Oregon in the 1820s, a pair of travelers, one a chef who keeps to himself, the other a Chinese immigrant on the run for a crime he committed, form an unlikely connection over their shared dream of striking it rich. Kelly Reichardt's first cow is a beautiful meditation on the relationships between man and man and man and nature. Never rarely sometimes always. Eliza Hitman's follow-up to 2017's critically acclaimed Beach Rats is a powerful drama that's mostly a character study of two fully realized young women but also a commentary on how dangerous it is to be a teenage girl in America. David Byrne's American Utopia. American Utopia couldn't have come at a better time. Just when it felt like there was nothing to celebrate in the world, the former Talking Heads frontman, teaming up with director Spike Lee, brings us this joyous expression of art, empathy, and compassion, and one of the best concert films since Stop Making Sense. Newcomer Sidney Flanagan is a revelation as Autumn, a quiet 17-year-old girl who goes on a painful journey of self-discovery after becoming pregnant. I'm thinking of ending things. One of the stranger, more challenging entries in Charlie Kaufman's filmography, and that's saying something, I'm thinking of ending things, starring Jesse Plemons and Jesse Buckley, admittedly isn't for everyone, but for those willing to go along for the trippy ride. It's a mind-bending, if not maddeningly perplexing, joy. David Thewlis and Tony Collette steal the show as Plemons' creepy parents. Although it's listed as a horror film, I'm thinking of ending things aims for existential dread more than terror. Thanks for watching it. Please don't forget to subscribe for more videos.